Hello, uh, good morning. Uh, today I'm going to revise briefly on this chapter electromagnetic induction. Now, this chapter is only uh, applicable to the pure sciences. Uh, electromagnetic induction, in simple means, we use electricity uh, to produce uh, magnet. No, we use a change of magnetism to produce electricity. Okay. Uh, the most uh, basic question would be a coil. Now, this coil uh, is made of copper. So, a copper wire is being twisted into many, many turns, many, many rounds. And to show that there is a current being induced, we have a meter, which we call galvanometer. It actually sends for a uh, small current. Now, by itself, this is a metal coil, a wire coil. It should not have current. But we're going to show that uh, uh, by using a change of magnetic flux in the coil, uh, we can actually induce current. The most typical example would be we push in, a, we push a magnet near the coil. So this is a permanent magnet. <coughs> This is simply a copper wire coil. Now, as we push the magnet near the coil, this permanent magnet, there is an effect. And this effect is what we call electromagnetic induction. So, what is happening when I push near it, there will be magnetic flux coming out from here. And this magnetic flux will cut the coil. So, the keywords are there will be a change in magnetic flux or magnetic field. So as you push nearer and nearer, the, the magnetic flux that cuts the coil will be stronger and stro stronger. And because of this change in magnetic flux in the metal conductor, which is the coil, electromagnetic induction occur. Now, what will be induced? What will be induced? EMF will be induced. In EMF is like a voltage. And if EMF is induced, and if it's a complete circuit, current will also be induced, since EMF is like the voltage. And therefore, the galvanometer will deflect momentarily. Now, so can you imagine that the, when this is pushing, uh, there's a change of magnetic flux because these magnetic field lines will cut the coil and therefore electromagnetic induction occur. EMF induce the current flow here and the galvanometer deflect. Now, uh, if we want to have a larger deflection, we want a bigger induced current, uh, what can we do? Of course, we can push in the magnet faster, or we use a stronger magnet, or we have more turns in the coil. Now, this is because uh, due to Faraday's law, the higher the rate, of change of magnetic flux, rate of change of magnetic flux, the higher the induced EMF. So this is what we call the Faraday's law. The higher the rate of change, this is change of magnetic flux, okay, uh, the higher the rate of change of magnetic flux, the higher the EMF. That means it's proportional. So there are three ways to increase the induced EMF and induced current. First way is push the magnet faster, nearer to the coil, uh, push in faster. Second is use a stronger magnet. The third is to have more turns in the coil. They all lead to this a uh, higher rate of change of magnetic flux and according to Faraday's law, the EMF induced will be 
higher. Now, the last point is uh, if uh, we push in the North Pole, how does the current flow here? Is it this way or the other way? So we have to use Lenz law. Now, when we push in North, Lenz law states that you will try to oppose, you will try to push out. So a North Pole is being induced here. Now, how to get the current in, in the coin? Using the right hand, this is a right hand grip rule. In order to achieve North Pole, the thumb must point this side, uh, which is the North, and the current will flow this way. Okay, current flow this way. So this will be the induced current. Okay, so of course, if you pull out the North Pole, you try to oppose, you induce a South Pole the current will reverse and you see the galvanometer deflect in the opposite direction if you push in the north pole and you pull out the north pole okay uh, thank you very much i hope this is helpful for those who are doing o level revision for the pure physics okay have a nice day thank you